Hey, welcome to the Blue Garden. All right, we're gonna finish up our worm tower. Now, a lot of you guys, when you do an internet search for worm tower, you see a whole bunch of different things. I'm gonna show you the true definition of the word worm tower. All right, so I wanna show you here something. What you see on the internet, uh, people using four inch PVC. And I wanna show you here what I'm using. All right, look at this. That's 10 inch, 10 and a half, or 10 inch ID worm tower, you see? And then the people on the internet, they do it all wrong. Well, let me just rephrase that. They do it by burying the PVC in the ground, okay? I'll show you an example. You bury it like that. They drill a whole bunch of little holes and they want the worms to go out into the garden. But what they don't understand is if you're using compost worms, night uh red wigglers they're not gophers they're not subterranean they don't dig tunnels they don't dig out they stay on the top surface layer of the soil where it's nice soft moist so when you use a tower like this and you put them in there and you're expecting them to come out of the little holes and go into your garden and put the compost it doesn't work that way. They only stay inside the tube. So you're defeating the whole purpose of the worm tower, all right? You're better off just gathering the, the, the castings and sprinkle it all over your garden. But this is not what I'm doing here. I'm going after the lychee. And that is the, uh, a lot of people say it wrong. It's not worm pee. It's not worm juice. Lychee comes from the secretion of the worm body. It's like sweat. Sort of like what I'm doing right now. You see this? That's pure sweat. That mixed with the water is how you get your lychee. It's not watering down your compost, your um, castings. Yes, some of the casting just get diluted when you pour the water out on the top down but it's mainly the lychee comes from the worm secretion or if you want to say worm sweat that's what it is all right then all right let's start so when I measure five feet I'm gonna do this five feet You can see how she looks right there with four legs. All right, here it is, all done. Here's my legs. Got about two feet right here. And then the whole body is secure, tight. It's heavy. This is uh, the true definition of a worm tower, all right? Got blueprints, just have to notify me. The Worm Tower is an interesting permaculture innovation designed to allow you to recycle food waste and create worm casting without ever leaving your garden. Now, I want to head off any confusion about what I mean by a worm tower. I'm not talking about stackable worm systems like the Worm Factory, Verma Hut, or the Hot Frog. I'm talking about partially buried PVC tubes that have holes drilled in the bottom 12 to 18 inches. The largest diameter PVC available to the general public is 4 inches wide, and we'll get back to why that's important here in a second. The theory is that you put the food waste into the PVC pipe. 
and the worms come and go as they like through those holes, entering the tower to eat the food and then leaving to deposit the castings around the garden while also aerating the soil. This is a fascinating concept, but I'm skeptical for a few reasons. Now, I want to say up front that I could be wrong. I wrote a blog post about why worm towers probably don't work, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from readers who swear up and down that they do. So I'm open to having my mind changed. But if they do work, I don't think they work the way people think they do. And I'll explain further at the end. So why do I think worm towers don't work the way people think they do? Firstly, composting worms aren't soil dwellers. Red wigglers, European night crawlers, African night crawlers, and other composting worms are epigeic worms, which is Greek for on the soil. These worms are scrawny and lack the muscle to burrow vertically or horizontally into the soil like their endogeic and anisic brothers and sisters. They normally live above the soil, but below loose layers of organic matter like manure or leaves on the forest floor. Even if they can live in a four inch PVC pipe and eat food waste, they're unlikely to be able to make their way out into more compacted soil. Secondly, because composting worms tend to stay near the surface of their habitat, vermicomposting is reliant on surface area rather than volume. And there's a tiny amount of surface area inside a four inch pipe. Let's do the math. A four inch diameter pipe will get you 12 inches of surface area or one twelfth of a square foot. If we stock this PVC pipe at two pounds per square foot of worms, then we're only talking between two and three ounces of composting worms. If we generously assume that worms will eat half their weight uh, each day, and I think the real number is about half that, then our worm towers can process a whopping one to one and a half ounces of organic waste every day, which includes both the food waste and the bedding which you're supposed to put into a worm bin. That's not much. So if you're using worm towers, then you'll have to accept that you'll either process very little waste or your garden will be dotted with white pipes sticking out of the ground like tombstones in a cemetery. All right, here we have our worm housing. You need to see how she looks. I'm gonna get this and put it into our worm tower. Now I already got spacing down there. And now, Put a warehouse down there. And there she is. The worms, the worms would live here, create the casings, and the lychee, lychee would come out here. All right, so we are done. Next step is just to get our worms. Okay, welcome to the blue garden. All right, we just got our worms. Just filled it up with some of this thing, cocoa air, core. And here's the worms we got. Instructions. Just got the bag out, dehydrated them, made it in there, put them in there at the temperature. And everything sealed in there. All right. So we have some leche, and it'll come out right there. All right. I'll show you some follow-up. But the worms came from Uncle Jim Worm Farm. All right. So be sure to get yours from there. All right. Look at this. So we had movement there. That guy's moving. We got food there. I think they have enough food. I don't know, but it looks like they're alive. There's one right there. So we got the temperature there, 85 to 79, and then outside, well, 82. So, all right, so take a look. Here's my worms. Temperature for the worms. We just put some food in there, food scrap. Now I need to moisten this a little bit. So I'm gonna put a whole cup of water in there. 
And then uh, let's cover that up <coughs> right here with the special tarp. Whoa! Damn thing. Scoot down. Okay. There. Push it too hard. Now, let's put the top back on. Now, let's put our lock. Okay, there we go. All right, now, there we go, the temperature. See, we got glare right there. 84. 79 so it's 79 inside about 84 outside you can see the temperature here the reading about 84 83 on the outside so inside temperature is 79 so then you can see how I had the excess in case over spill water see from yesterday not that much so you can't put a lot of water in there and there you go oh see here's the food scrap bin collect your food scraps see that so everything's working out good i got about 500 worms and then look at this i want to show you see this this is my invention here this is to kill and get rid of all the little mosquitoes. This stuff works great. But look at here, I want to show you. See the fire hazard? There is no fire hazard. This thing tips over, falls, something falls on it. Cannot ignite. Cannot cause the fire because metal housing protected with this little tin. So there's nothing that can cause a fire here. This is the main cause. Very thick metal. It's an electrical junction box. See that? And how it's attached to the tin here with the screws. So there is no danger of getting a fire caused by overnight by something flying in there or just tipping over or the cat, the dog fight, knocking it over and it falls on the ground. This would not, it falls on the ground, this would not cause the flame to touch anything combustible see because all steel but double precaution i got this pot pan right here so you see how safe it is it does work there's uh not a whole lot of mosquitoes here so it does work but the main thing right now is the worms the worms are doing good there's not much leche coming out of there of course not we well, haven't even started with this only 24 hours so again i want to show you that we bought 500 worms composting worms from uncle jim's worm farm all right there's the number and the website we put in this uh cocoa grow coconut core and this is the main source and there was a lot going on yesterday but they look pretty good and they're eating well it's these food scraps all right so i'll show you more information and details to come be sure to watch the blue garden